Let me call us to worship by reading, um, not that we haven't already been worshiping, but uh, to call us officially to worship with uh, this call to worship from Psalm 57, uh, verses 9 uh, to 11. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praise to you among the nations, for your steadfast love is great to the heavens your faithfulness to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Let us come and praise the Lord and give Him glory. Let's pray together. Lord, we indeed come and unite our hearts and our minds and our voices in giving thanks to You. Your love is amazing. You deserve all of our praise. You deserve all the glory. You deserve all the honor. For you allowed your son to go to the cross and receive what he did not deserve so that we too might receive what we do not deserve, grace, salvation, eternal life. And so, Lord, we come again to commit our lives to You. We pray that You would forgive us of any ways that we hold back. Lord, forgive our apathy Forgive our complacency. And we would ask, Lord, that by the power of Your Holy Spirit that You would exhort us, that You would empower us to become more Christ-like. We do pray, O God, for Your healing where healing is needed. We pray for each individual we've named. And we rejoice with those who rejoice. We rejoice in the gift of babies. We rejoice in each child, for they are precious in your sight. We rejoice with their families. And Lord, we also mourn with those who mourn. We remember Gary and his family, even as we come to celebrate Susan's life. We pray for healing in your church, O Lord. We pray for healing in our nation. Lord, we need revival. We need restoration. We need to be changed, O Lord. Change our hearts, O Lord. Make us ever new. Change our hearts, O Lord. Make us more like you. All this and many other prayers we offer in the name of Jesus, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand and sing with us our opening medley. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here.
Great Spirit in this place. And I know that it's the Spirit of the Lord. There are sweet expressions on each face and I know they feel the presence of the Please be seated. Tim, wow. That was worth getting up for this morning. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I'd like to invite the children to come forward uh, for a time that's especially for you. Got some more coming. Charlie, you were quick, but they're coming. <laughs> uh oh. You like the camera? I don't like being in front of the camera, to tell you the truth, Wesley, but some people do. Well, I got a box here uh, with, uh, with car parts in it, actually. Uh, I feel kind of funny talking about cars and engines with Mr. Wood sitting back there who could, uh, could build one in his sleep, but, uh, uh, but we'll try anyway. So I, uh, the first one I got is a bulb, uh, a, a bulb that goes in the headlights uh, of a car. So they... In a lot of new cars, these plug in behind and, and shine through uh, the headlight that you see or the lens. Um, I have here uh, what's called a, a distributor. Uh, it, it has eight wires that come off of it, and it distributes a power to each of the cylinders of the engine, makes a spark and makes them run so that the gas will explode and, and actually run. Um, I have here a wiring harness. I think part of it, I think it came off of a 66 Ford Fairlane, but I'm not, I'm, I'm not certain. That's, that's where I had it stored with that. But this one tells you, this one plugs in to tell you, um, I've got it labeled, the reason why I know. Uh, it tells you whether or not your car's getting hot or not. It goes to what's called the temperature sending unit. And then I have an old pair of brakes uh, here that I, that I took. A, what's that? Can you use it to build something? Well, I actually took these off of my daughter's car. Uh, I can't get it open. 
But trust me, there's a set of brakes uh, uh, in there. They look like this, brake shoes. Uh, so what I want to share with you this week is a little bit like what I shared with you guys who were here last time. Remember we talked about uh, if you, it takes 100 pennies to make a dollar? And you guys told me, even if I got one missing, I don't have a dollar, right? Well, in a similar way, it takes all these parts and many, many more to make a car run. And uh, every one of them's needed. So let's, let's imagine, let's pretend for a little bit this, this headlight bulb could talk. Think about this. Would this be silly or not? If this bulb said to these brake pads, listen, I, I'm out front. I'm bright and shiny. I'm the pretty one here. I'm leading the way. Uh, I don't need you brake pads. You're gray. You don't look too good. You're dusty. Besides, nobody sees you anyway. You're up underneath there somewhere. Who needs you? Would that be ridiculous? Yeah. Why would that be ridiculous? Yeah, you need brakes to stop the car. It's one thing to see where you're going. It's another thing to, to stop. What if this same light said to this wire over here, I don't need you, wire. Get out of here. You're up under the hood somewhere anyway. Who cares? They only see me. Wouldn't work, would it? If there wasn't wires running to this headlight, it'd never work to start with, right? It has to get power all the way from the battery to run this headlight. Yeah, it'd be silly. It'd be ridiculous. Well, the same thing's true in the church, you guys. It would be silly and even mean if I said, we don't need you kids. That'd be mean, wouldn't it? Yeah. It'd be kind of mean if you guys said, we don't need you, preacher. Get out of here. It'd be kind of mean, wouldn't it? Yeah, we need each other. The Bible says that it takes all of us, that that we need to come together as the body of Christ, uh, that we all make up the church and everyone is needed. So that's important. Don't forget that. We need everyone. Uh, I'm just going to keep talking about that during our time together, talking about the gifts of the Spirit. We need every gift that everyone brings, okay? Will you guys pray with me? Dear God, thank you. For every member of our church, everyone is important. So thank you for putting us together. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You guys can go to the nursery or children's church or back with your folks. Good to see you, bud. <laughs> you like that, huh? Well, maybe you can someday. I'll show you. I've got other parts. Your dad's right there.
Thank you, Gary and Sue. Uh, let me just say as we uh, begin, if you haven't, uh, the message today, if you haven't completed a spiritual gifts inventory, I, I would recommend uh, you do so. I think there's still a, a few copies out in the vestibule. Uh, I also sent out some copies uh, via email. Uh, you can also uh, download a, a copy uh, of the inventory at spiritualgiftstest.com. Uh, as I said last week, don't analyze it too much. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, be honest. The test is only as good as we are honest, as we uh, honestly uh, assess uh, who we are. And remember, this is just a tool. Uh, it's not a definitive statement about your spiritual gifts. It's just a tool. And I, I'm going to add some other words of caution uh, today. And once you've taken them, uh, it's primarily for you to have so that in the coming weeks, as I talk about the gifts, you can kind of say, okay, that's my gift. Let, let's see what the Bible says of, about that particular gift. Um, and then also at some point, we may collect those actually and kind of get your top three gifts uh, as, you've, as you learn them. I think it's important for us to know how you're gifted as we think about how you might serve in the, in the church. Sometimes we have a way of putting people in places where they're not really gifted instead of looking uh, at their giftedness. So uh, I think this is probably the last Sunday I'll put a, uh, an outline in the pew uh, just because too many are, honestly, you guys, they're staying here and they're getting thrown away. And so uh, I'm going to put a smaller number of copies out in the vestibule uh, as, so as to not waste the church's resources. Uh, that outline will also be available, though, if, you're, if you like having an outline. It'll be on the website typically by Thursday uh, afternoon, and you can download one there if you'd like uh, to have an outline. Uh, so let's pray to go. Lord, we thank you for this day. We, we thank you for your word. And we pray not to us, but to you be all the glory. Lord, I am clearly not worthy to stand in this pulpit. But if you would use me, if you would send your Holy Spirit to proclaim your word, I would, would be honored. And Lord, I pray that uh, where I stand in the way, you'd move me out of the way. I pray, Lord, that as your word is proclaimed today, that your people would hear uh, what you have for them, the truth that, that you're revealing to them about their gifts and how to use their gifts. Lord, open our eyes uh, to know more of the Holy Spirit. Uh, we ask in Christ's holy name, amen. Today's really introductory material about the gifts uh, which is a little more difficult, perhaps a, a, at times a, a little more dry. I, I hope not. But I, I think you need some of this introductory material before we then dive in uh, to your individual gifts. I'm going to read from 1 Corinthians 12, verses 4 uh, to 7. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Thanks be to God for His holy word. Amen. I know it's for some it's a little early to talk about, but I love Christmas. I always have. Now, I'm not one of those who starts counting down on December 26, and I'm not one of those who plays Christmas carols all year long, but I love Christmas, and I love Christmas Day. I, I enjoy it. I enjoy purchasing presents, especially for our girls, and, and now I'm quite sure that we're going to enjoy uh, purchasing presents for our granddaughter, Audrey. I especially enjoyed giving gifts, though, when the girls were, were little, when they were young. And, and to their credit, our girls were very appreciative. But I always labored over the purchasing of gifts. I, I labored over whether we had purchased the right gifts. And I labored over where, whether we had, had done enough. 
And that sometimes got me in trouble because I added something silly at the last minute, like a ping pong table that had like, I don't know, 3,000 screws to, to put in it at the last minute. But I always labored over that. Because isn't it heartbreaking when you work so hard to get your children and your grandchildren what, what you think they will enjoy, but then they're dissatisfied or they're jealous of what their cousins or their friends got for Christmas. Maybe your kids are really happy Christmas morning when you're looking at all the gifts, but then they arrive at the grandparents and there are the cousins telling all that they received. All of a sudden, you hear about how the cousins got the latest video game console. And all your poor, deprived children got were a couple games for their old one. As I think about that, I can't help but think about the gifts God has given us. And I wonder sometimes if our ungratefulness breaks his heart today we're launching into spiritual gifts and before we look at individual gifts i want to share some overarching thoughts and guidelines and one think about this folks our heavenly father has lovingly given each one of us at least one spiritual gift you may only have one you may have one dominant and a, and a number of less dominant gifts. You may have multiple gifts that are roughly equal. Generally speaking, no one person has all the gifts, but everyone has at least one spiritual gift. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 and 7, Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. There are a number of gifts, and we're, we're going to briefly look at each one of those in the coming weeks, but they come from the same Spirit. And to each, to each person there has been given the manifestation of the Spirit. Manifestation is another word for gifts. To each person there has been given at least one spiritual gift. Which means, God through the Holy Spirit has carefully lovingly, with each person in mind, giving you the gift that He desires you have. So it's a slap in God's face when we do not appreciate the gifts He's given us and when we're jealous and want other people's gifts. Do not be jealous. You have the gift or gifts you have because God wanted you to have those gifts. And regardless of which gifts you have, no gift is any greater or yours is no greater or no lesser than mine. Each gift is important. Each person has a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I'll say more about it again, but each Christian has a manifestation of the Holy Spirit. Paul makes this point so clear as he continues in the second part of 1 Corinthians 12. And he compares the church to a physical body where every member has a unique function, yet all the parts have to work together. Beginning with verse 18. But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them, as He chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. God arranged us all in one body. There's many parts. There's many members, but there's one body. The same is true for our gifts. There's various gifts, but one Spirit gave those gifts. And the Holy Spirit has given us the gifts that He's seen fit to give us. And He's then put us together in this one body. Paul goes on to say in verse 22 that the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Back to my illustration with the kids, just because the headlight's out front, it can't say to the dirty brake pads, we don't need you, right? Even though it's hidden, it's indispensable. 
you, you could be tempted, folks, to see your gifts as weak, but I want to urge you, do not entertain that temptation. Your gifts are indispensable to the body of Christ. Your gifts and mine are needed. Your gifts complement mine and my gifts complement yours. Your gifts fill needs that are beyond my gifts and hopefully my gifts fill needs that are beyond your gifts. Do not compare your gifts with the goal of belittling yourself or belittling anyone else. If you want to compare... If you really just can't refrain from comparing gifts, compare them this way. Compare them by saying something like, hey, you got the gift of teaching? Guess what? I, I got the gift of helps. Let's come alongside one another and be partners in ministry. Or, or you've got the gift of speaking in tongues? I got the gift of interpreting tongues. We'd be great partners in ministry. Do not compare your gifts in any way, folks, that might divide the body of Christ. For look again at what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 12, 7. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. The gifts are given for the common good. They're, they're not given to set up some sort of spiritual hierarchy. But they're given for the common good of the body of Christ. Paul makes the purpose of spiritual gifts even more clear in Ephesians 4. In verse 11, he lists some of the gifts. They're often referred to as the vocational gifts, the prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers. And then he says, verse 12, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. Continuing in verse 13, until, all, until we all attain to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood or womanhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. God has given us each task to do, and He's given us supernatural gifts to do them. And those gifts are for the common good. Our, our gifts are meant to equip us and to build up the church and to unite us until we grow to maturity and become more Christ-like. That's the goal. That's the purpose of every spiritual gift, to equip the church for ministry, to unite us, and to grow us to become more Christ-like. Something else I need to say in this introduction, which should be obvious, but I don't want to assume. These are spiritual gifts. They come from the Holy Spirit. You cannot fabricate them the holy spirit supernaturally gives you the gifts we see this in the word that that paul uses in first corinthians 12 the word paul uses at the beginning there for spiritual gifts is pneumatikos which literally means the spirituals that he's given us the spirituals most of the rest of the time paul is going to use the word charisma or the plural charismata and charisma is derived from the Greek word charis, which means grace. So spiritual gifts are spirituals. They are gifts of God's grace. They're supernatural. You don't have these naturally, but praise God, every born-again Christian has at least one spiritual gift. Which means... Folks, there's a distinction between spiritual gifts and talents, or what we might call natural abilities. And, and granted, the distinction is blurred. Granted the, granted, the distinction is sometimes hard to see. But briefly, let me share three distinctions. First of all, when, when, when we talk about the spiritual gifts here, we're talking about the gifts, the 19 or 20 gifts, listed in Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians Whereas talents might be other things like the ability to sing or to repair automobiles or, or uh, create beautiful artwork. And by the way, I say 19 or 20 because Christians have some disagreement on, on, on what are the, the number. And, and the reason is that some will list the gifts of helps 
and the gifts of service as separate gifts. I agree with the author of the inventory you've taken and see helps and service as basically one and the same spiritual gift. Others will also list gifts like celibacy and missionary and hospitality and intercession. Uh, They refer to those as potential gifts, even though they acknowledge that they're not strictly listed in the gift of spiritual gifts. So for the sake of our study, I'm going to confine the gifts to those in Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, and Ephesians 4. Not that that's an exhaustive list. There may be other gifts, actually. But these are the ones that we know Scripture has said, hey, these are spiritual gifts. Another distinction is that those spiritual gifts and talents are both ultimately from God. The church has tended to speak of spiritual gifts as being supernaturally given by the Holy Spirit for the building up of the body of Christ, for the building up of His church. Whereas a talent may have more to do with genetics and training. And spiritual gifts are specifically designed, and this probably should have been uh, the third one here, and there should have been fourth uh, in your, if you're keeping notes. Spiritual gifts are specifically designed for the building up of the church, whereas talents can be used for spiritual or non-spiritual purposes. But the gifts are for the building up of the church. Final distinction, spiritual gifts are given to people who are saved by the grace of God. They're given to people who are born again, who have been regenerated by the Holy Spirit. Whereas the saved and the unsaved have talents. It only makes sense that God gives the spiritual gifts to those who are saved because He gave them for the building up of His church, the saved people. That's why He gave the gifts. Look, I I know it's not easy to make the distinction sometimes. And if they're both being used for God's glory, maybe it's not even important to always make the distinction. But for the sake of our study here, I want you to know we're talking about the gifts listed in Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4, the gifts supernaturally given to those born again for the building up of the church. Now, how do we discern our gifts? Well, Certainly, spiritual gift tests uh, are one way. Uh, They can be very helpful. But even as I've given it, they must come with a warning. Uh, And in fact, some uh, pastors, some leaders won't won't even use them at all. Uh, Such inventories are not foolproof. They're not the final authority. Ultimately, the gifts are gifts of the Holy Spirit. I hesitated before deciding to use an inventory, but I decided to to use it as a starting point to get you thinking about your gifts and more importantly, to get you praying about your gifts. Uh, Again, these are gifts of the Spirit. They are gifts of God's grace. and And if we want to know those gifts and we want to exercise those gifts, then we need to be in prayer. We need to be asking God to reveal our gifts to us. God has given every one of us, again, at least one spiritual gift. And He wants you to know what it is. He wants you to use it. So keep asking Him to show you and keep asking Him until He reveals it to you. I also gave the inventory in part to give us a a common starting point to talk about the gifts, to better understand the spiritual gifts. If you're going to discern through prayer what your spiritual gifts are, you need to know a little bit about them. You need to understand what they are. You need to have enough knowledge to pray over those gifts. So I want to urge you to continue to study these gifts. Continue to look over your gifts uh, after you've taken the inventory. Uh, Spiritualgiftstest.com also has a description of these gifts that that seems pretty good. Uh, In fact, I'm going to be using some of that as I teach you about the gifts Billy Graham also has a a good commentary about uh, a number of the spiritual gifts in his book simply titled The Holy Spirit. So know the gifts. Study the gifts as we continue. And then here's one that may be a little harder for most of us. You need to know yourself better. You need to know yourself 
better. If we're not careful with spiritual gift inventories, they can be a little bit like personality test. There's a tendency, a temptation to answer the way we want to be instead of the way we really are. Did you hear that? There's a temptation to answer the way we'd like to be instead of the way we really are. Paul said in Romans 12, 3, For by grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. An inventory is only as accurate as you are honest, as you think of yourself with sober judgment. Some of you may be thinking, i got to tear that one up and get another one uh, about now. But seriously, it's only as good as you are honest with the answers. If you want to discern your gifts, I'd urge you to think carefully about who you are. Further, gift inventories really should only be used within the body of Christ, not in isolation. Our gifts are best learned when we pray We study the gifts, we know ourselves, and then we gain insight from our fellow believers. A trusted friend, beloved, may be able to help you see gifts that you're blind to. A trusted friend may be able to help you see gifts that you don't even know you have. But be warned, a trusted friend may also correct you regarding your giftedness. Ultimately, it's God's insight you're seeking, and, and human insight is flawed. Let me be clear about that. But, but for example, let's say you think you have the gift of teaching, but you have three or four trusted Christian friends who say, you know, Danny, you got some gifts, but teaching ain't one of them. It might be time to listen. It might be time to say, have I missed something here, Lord? Have I really looked at myself with sober judgment? Quick recap of today. I know a lot's coming at you in terms of overview. Every Christian has at least one spiritual gift. Don't compare your gifts. Each gift is important and God has lovingly given you the gift He wants you to have. Spiritual gifts are for our common good. Therefore, equipping the saints, building up the body of Christ, attaining unity, and maturing to the fullness of Christ. And they are spiritual gifts, not talents. They're the gifts listed again in Romans 12, 1 Corinthians 12, Ephesians 4. They're supernaturally given by the Holy Spirit for the building up of the church. They're given to those who who are saved. Inventories can help us discern our gifts, but they must be used with caution. So pray, study the gifts, know yourself, and discern the gifts within the body of Christ. Well, that's more than enough for one day. Um, Let's uh, pray together. Next week, we'll start to look at uh, the spiritual gifts uh, individually. Let's pray. Lord, help us discern our gifts. And Lord, help us to be satisfied with the gifts You've given us. Lord, remind us that You have lovingly given us our gifts. You have in Your wisdom given each of us gifts, and then in Your wisdom You said, I need these people at Stewart Presbyterian Church. Here's the place where I want them to exercise their gifts. So Lord, I pray that we would use our gifts for the common good. I pray that we would use our gifts to build one another up. I pray that we would use our gifts gifts to build up the church and to further your kingdom by the power of the Holy Spirit. Oh God, send your Spirit to unite our hearts. Make us one body, working together. 
To your glory, O God, through the power of the Holy Spirit, and in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Please stand and sing with us the blessing. <clears throat> I cannot offer any greater blessing than what you've just sung, church. So go in peace. Go in peace. Amen.